Hey guys, Ron here, and welcome back to the series in which I document my walk during a nice autumn afternoon and create three Pokemon based on what I saw on my walk. As I stroll, I'll point out all the potential neat stuff I see that could make for some creative new Pokemon designs, and then we'll put them together and draw some cool Pokemon. So I hope you follow along with this imaginative exercise and tweet at me some Pokemon that you created using the stuff you see in this video or even your own walks. Make sure to check out the previous Pokemon I created in the last video by clicking the card on the top right corner, because in order for this series to continue, I need you guys to show some love to the episodes that already exist. So since it's not hot outside anymore, I'm going to be walking during the day, and now that it's autumn, we gotta make ourselves some Pokemon that represent the season, but I didn't want to be too cliche or boring. Everywhere I go I see sticks, uh, how about a stick Pokemon? Nah. A lot of fallen leaves, maybe we'll combine that with something we see later. Perhaps a Pokemon that hides in the leaves and when people go to step on the leaves, it attacks them? Maybe it has a spiky back, not too bad. And can I say that there are tons of traffic cones around? I really want to make that traffic cone hermit crab that I discussed in the last video. Probably will eventually. I mean, the leaves are obviously changing. We gotta use that somehow. I'll keep thinking. What about this thing? W what is this thing? I, I know it's some kind of fruit and we got a lot of Pokemon like Chespin that are based on shells. I decided to crush it to see what's inside, but it was strong, so I gave it another mighty blow and it was kind of underwhelming. Nothing really inside, so moving on. As I continue the walk, I want to take a moment to appreciate the colorful leaves. We got some yellow leaves, brown leaves, some green and purple leaves, and of course, red and orange. But as I admired one, it fled. So maybe a leaf related Pokemon that is super fast, like Sceptile, but smaller. So like Trico, I guess. We got pumpkins and corn stalks. Is, is there a tall corn Pokemon? Look at these very pretty flowers for, for autumn at least. I never knew flowers could be this bright during the colder months, but I'm not a botanist or anything, so there's pumpkin picking somewhere. Well, I, I guess it's at this farm. <laughs> you see how these flowers grow super tall? We need a super tall flower Pokemon. Cute, but intimidating. That's tight. This is a great time of year to walk, but by the time this video comes out, it may be too cold where I am. Looks like someone's a serial tree murderer. They probably have their reasons though. As I was walking, I remembered Halloween existed. Skull tree Pokemon would be cool. Giant spider wouldn't, but you gotta admit, this thing is impressive. We also got more decorations to pick from. Mostly skeletons and scarecrows, but Cacturn is already a scarecrow, so a friendly scarecrow would help differentiate between the two. More stocks of corn here, but I can't really think of a stock Pokemon that wouldn't just look like Groot. It truly is a lovely walk though, and god damn it, these traffic cones are everywhere. The universe really wants me to make a traffic cone crab Pokemon. While I don't know if I'll make one in this video, enjoy these Pokemon that John Jr. and Maniac Charon sent me on Twitter, depicting the traffic cone Pokemon that they made. But as I kept on walking, I noticed how these sweet gum tree leaves were star shaped, which look like little leaf beings with a head, two arms, and two legs. So why not make a Pokemon that is a little leaf bug that flies around in the wind? And since they also come in different colors, why not have the Pokemon also come in all the colors that autumn leaves turn into? To make it even more interesting, it could evolve into a Pokemon with different color possibilities like Vivian and Forges. So while we have another half of the walk to go, let's go to the drawing board to make our first two Pokemon, and then go back to the walk in a few minutes to find inspiration for the third Pokemon. Now we have our sweet gum leaves as inspiration for our little pure grass type, because it's not really a bug, just a bug sized leaf. It's super flat, so its legs just overlap like folded paper, and I split the top segment of the leaf into antenna-like ears and gave it a nice bug-like eye and cute mouth. I was trying to figure out how to put patterns on this Pokemon's body that are both bug-like and leaf-like, and I had the idea to add spikes on the legs like crickets do, because if you look at the leaf, its edges are also spiked, and I used this stem as its tail. But I thought this concept was too long. Its proportions were huge. So I moved on to the rough attempt, now that I knew its body features. Its neck is way shorter, so it definitely looks cuter than before. Way more crickety than I first thought, which made me think that perhaps this Pokemon does have grass whistle and a very melodic cry. I gave its back a better flow and was almost done. I wanted to sketch out how it looks when it's jumping from a tree and gliding in the wind. In this state, it looks like a star-shaped leaf, like its inspiration, and it could even spin like a leaf blade shuriken. I decided to use the brown rotten spots on the leaf I saw as inspiration for the dark patterns on this Pokemon's body, making it look less empty. And now it's time to make the final rendering. I made it less sleek so it looks more animal-like, and decided to turn the patterns into wooden collars that look like the segments on a bug. Again, making it look more like a leaf-like animal than a straight-up crawling leaf. I added the finalized patterns and shaded it in to see whether or not they work. And they totally did! Now it's time to work on the evolved form. Before that, I added spikes to the pre-evolved form's shoulders to make it less awkward, and then started on the beautiful butterfly-like evolved form. The head is literally the same, just more bug-eyed and with an extra collar segment that extends to its belly. And then the wood turns into legs. 
and just like before I added shading work to make sure it all worked and damn did it work. I love how each segment is lighter as they ascend. I added a nice pattern on its head as if one of the leg patterns on the Prevost's legs migrated upon evolution and then I started on its wings. They're basically three segments of the original leaf that this family gets its inspiration from. I added some veins that didn't really look right and changed them a bit until they did. Then the diamond patterns made a lot of sense at the edge of the leaf wings just like how the autumn leaves have brown spots. Then I corrected the size comparison and didn't even need to make a second rendering because of how much I was satisfied. And there you have it, the grass type Pokemon Leaf Flat that evolves into the grass flying type Leaf Flutter. This Pokemon can only be found during the summer in its green state and depending on how deep into the autumn it is, you can catch a yellow, orange, red or purple one. It may not seem that impressive in battle until you understand its ability Drift, which lowers the accuracy of flying, fire and ice type moves all of which are its weaknesses. This phenomenon is possible because since this Pokemon flutters in the wind, specific types of moves can shift air currents around this Pokemon. Fire makes air rise, ice makes air fall, and flying type moves disrupt airflow, which allows this Pokemon to move out of the way as the wind changes its direction. Now back to the walk to make our final Pokemon. As I was walking, I noticed what looked like honey locust pods, which are related to the super edible carob and even peas. There were so many that I had an idea for a fruit worm Pokemon that lives in swarms, but we already have a bug-like Pokemon. Perhaps a Pokemon that throws these things like a boomerang, but why would it do that? Maybe the seeds are the Pokemon that hide in the pods, but these things are pretty boring. How about a Samara Pokemon? You know those helicopter seeds that fall from trees? But I already made one years ago, so we can't. Here's some cats chilling. I don't blame them. There's also so many Halloween decorations to use, but we already have Pokemon based on clowns, pumpkins, and wolves. And this dog is super cool. What's up, dog? What are these called? They're, they're not cattails or pussy willows. What are they? We already made a leaf Pokemon, but these have a very different shape. Geese! There aren't any geese Pokemon. They're like long-necked ducks, and we already have a lot of duck Pokemon. It's actually pretty underrated how aggressive they are when in trouble, so maybe we can have a goose Pokemon that is very dangerous and serious. They have very long wingspans and can easily be typed as water flying, and the pattern on their faces could be really fun to translate into a Pokemon design. And here we have a waterfall, just like how the Pokemon from the last episode evolves in the wild. And here we have some authentic tall grass, just like in the Pokemon games. Now it's easy to see how Pokemon hide in the wild and pop out at us. We also have a lot of round fruits on the ground. Maybe I can add that into a Pokemon, just like how Sceptile has its round legumes on its back. But if you look up, you can see fruits in clusters, and they kinda remind me of Breloom's tail. Literally the same thing. Just trying to see if this path leads me to anything cool. And it did. It led me to this airfield where people fly model planes, and looking at these launch pads gave me inspiration. Why not combine the goose with a plane? A goose that swoops down in top speed and attacks. So for reference, I have a goose, and the other half of this Pokemon is based on the Spruce Goose, which is the biggest water plane ever built and has the largest wingspan out of any plane ever flown. Combining that with a goose makes a lot of sense, especially since they both have goose in the name. I want this Pokemon to have a flat head that kind of connects to the body, just like a plane. I took the pattern it has and made it look more aerodynamic, like how the Flash and Hermes have wings on their heads. It also kind of looks like Mutton Chop since this goose is going to have the personality of a veteran pilot. Now I didn't really know what to do with the body, I, I knew I wanted it to look like a plane, so I was experimenting with how the neck connected to its body. Should it just be one flat top? I didn't think so. This doesn't look like a Pokemon that wants to live. Segmenting the head and body does make it look a little better. But I think we're gonna try to keep its neck, since geese are kinda known for their necks. But I'll make the feathers a bit scruffy, cause this thing has seen some shinks. And he's weak to shinks, so it was terrifying. Now the plane like wings and tail feathers still have to look like they're part of a bird. So once I started adding feathers, it began to look more natural. But now that we have a real idea of what this thing really looks like, let's make an actual sketch that is more planned out and proportionate. It's always smart to draw the basic shapes first, and then the details. This way it was easy to focus on making the back and head flat, and the body more plane like I decided to start adding the features, and then I shaded it cause it doesn't really look like a goose until the head, tail and feet are black. Then I decided to shrink the chest a bit cause it was too bulky. I added a few touch ups and then began the final render. I really wanted to emphasize the scruffiness of this Pokemon. It's always in battle, and that also helped make the neck look thicker, like in the first concept draft, but this way it looks more natural. Cause I do really want the neck to seamlessly transition into the body. And there you have it. I gave it a navy tint since this water flying type should blend into the sky and sea, especially at night. 
and it's now officially named Brantero, after the goose genus. It has the ability Intimidate and hidden ability Reckless, so it can use Brave Bird to its full effectiveness. You don't want to anger this Pokemon, because it can take to the skies in an instant and shoot the most precise water blast in the sea. So I really hope you enjoyed this series, because I want to make more. So why not share it with your friends and leave a like to show your support. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter to show me what you came up with from what you saw in my walk or on your own. And check the description for the music I used, the shirts I made for you guys, my Patreon, where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. But for now, I'll see you guys very soon.